I'm Dr. Ndola Prata, Associate Professor in Residence of Maternal and Child Health in the School of Public Health at the University of California, Berkeley. With my colleagues, Suzanne Bell and Karen Weidert, we wrote a review of prevention of postpartum hemorrhage interventions in low resource settings, looking at current perspectives. The reason why we did that is we know that more than 40 million cases of obstetric hemorrhage occur every year. So in the review of the PPH prevention interventions, um, we focus on misoprostol, one of the latest technologies added to the prevention of postpartum hemorrhage, but we look at all other interventions from uh, using information from randomized controlled trials and non-randomized field trials. We also look at challenges and opportunities to scale up those interventions. So our results show that active management of third stage of labor is considered the gold standard strategies and it combines non-drug interventions with uterotonic drugs, uh, the preferred uterotonic being oxytocin. However, oxytocin has limited applications in resource-poor countries due to heat instability and the fact that it needs to be provided by a skilled provider. Um, in fact, all of the WHO recommended interventions, with the exception of mesoprostol, need to be provided by skilled providers. This leads to limited reach because only those delivering in facilities will be able to make um, use of it. Some of the challenges that we found um, in our review our location of delivery, the scarcity of skilled providers, the poor storage condition of drugs and deficient public sector supply chains, the inconsistent, u inconsistent use of recommended drugs and procedures, continuum of care, and also the slow translation of research into policies and programs. Some of the opportunities that we found were related to the new heat-stable drug formulations that are in development, Uniject, the auto-disabled oxytocin injection system, home-based life-saving skills package that can be used uh, by non-skilled providers, but also the potential to increase public-private partnerships. So we conclude that because PPH is the main cause of maternal mortality worldwide, prevention interventions need to be prioritized as an essential way to improve maternal health. There is no panacea. So country-specific policies and programs need to be devised. However, it is important to prioritize the increase of access to prophylactic uterotonics. In places in low resource settings um, where maternal mortality is still high, misoprostol is the best way to reduce PPH deaths. I hope that you enjoy reading this paper and we are happy to take any suggestions and comments from you. Thank you.